This is Healing Your Soul with Katie Souza. Real keys to the miraculous. What's weighing you down, holding you back? What has wounded your soul? Today with Katie, discover the healing power of God for your life. Katie was once broken, oppressed, in bondage to a life of mental and physical pain until God gave her a new life and powerful messages of how you can heal your wounded soul. Now, here is Katie to begin today's program. Hi, this is Katie Souza. Welcome to Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Last week, I started sharing with you a very personal story about my mom who suffered with an excruciatingly painful disease for over 25 years. This illness was so horrific that it left her completely crippled and bedridden. It was totally devastating to her and to the rest of my family who cared for her. And we had to watch as this disease robbed her of her life. Maybe you're stuck in some kind of sickness or your loved one is suffering with a chronic or terminal disease or even worse, maybe they've already passed. It's hard not to think, why is this happening? Is all this suffering for nothing? You've probably searched high and low for anything that would change the situation, save the life of your loved one, or at least ease their pain. You may have been desperately seeking answers for years, but have not seen any change. So you're totally frustrated. I completely understand. I felt that same kind of desperation and frustration with mom's sickness, and it compelled me to scour the scriptures for answers and tools to heal her. Through her situation, though it was absolutely horrible, it drove me into the presence of God, where the Holy Spirit gave me the beginnings of the revelations you've heard on all these programs. What I learned through her affliction has now brought healing and breakthrough and victory to literally countless people around the world. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the continuation of this exciting journey. Let's start today's program with a review. In the 1980s, my mom was bit by a Lyme's tick. And when she was bitten, it released a spiral keep bacteria into her body. And that bacteria began to literally eat her bones and her cartilage. Then a few years later, she developed severe rheumatoid arthritis. She started losing bone rapidly. First, she lost both knees and they went and they put in two artificial knees. Then she lost her left hip. They went in and they put in an artificial hip. Six months later, she collapsed one day and they took her to the hospital. They opened her back up and they found that this spirochete bacteria had eaten the plastic parts of the man-made hip. Then she lost the, the little bones, the knuckles that held the little bones in your fingers. And so eventually the knuckle got eaten away and the little bone fell out of the knuckle, and then you could actually take her fingers and spin them around also because there was nothing to anchor down the fingers. Then after about a year or so passed by, she got to the point where she could only lift her arms like this much. They took her to the doctor and they did x-rays and they discovered that her arm bones and her shoulder bones literally looked like Swiss cheese because the disease had eaten the bones so much. Mom was in agony for 25 years. It was excruciating agony. I spent my days and nights pressing into the presence, worshiping God, worshiping God. Sometimes I would worship Him up to eight hours or more a day, just worshiping Him, waiting for Him to speak, waiting on His presence to come, sitting in His presence, reading the Word, looking for clues, asking Him to give me insight, showing me how to heal, showing me how to receive revelation. Mom's illness drove me, drove me to find answers. And for years, even after I got out of prison, nothing happened. No matter what I prayed for her, no matter, no matter what I believed for her, nothing happened. And I remember I just finally lost it. That was the end. I broke down and I screamed. I screamed and screamed inside of work. And I, I begged God. I said, you've got to say something to me. You've got to tell me what to do. I've been waiting all these years. I know you speak. And God spoke. He finally spoke to me. And he said, I want you to read Proverbs 3. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. I don't know about you, but after dealing with a bone issue for all those years, that was a word to me. 
That was a word. And I took a hold of that word like a desperate person who was drowning in the ocean, man. And I began to plant that word like a seed. And what happens when you plant a seed? You get a harvest. So I took the first and only thing I'd gotten after all those years and I began to plant it and I began to plant it and I began to decree it out of my mouth and I began to believe it and I began to speak it out loud and I would just plant and plant and plant that seed and plant that seed and God started to give me confirmations that were completely amazing. I reached over for the remote, I turned on the TV and there was a pastor, a southern pastor on the TV and he was going like this, plant your seed, plant your seed, plant your seed. And I was like, Play your seed, yeah, play your seed, play your seed, play your seed. As soon as I clicked to the next Christian channel, there was an older looking man with glasses on like this, and he was reading, and he looked up at the camera and he said, The word is a big bag of seed. I remember I went and told mom the story. And then I started to tell her everything that had been happening. She was just amazed. She was so adorable. She would just sit there being amazed at all this stuff. And she goes, Do you really think? happen. I'm like, yes, yes, it can happen. Believe it. And that's when she started telling me about this date that she'd been getting. It was 11-11, 11-11. She'd been seeing these numbers everywhere she went. She would go and take her nap in the morning and suddenly she'd pop awake and she'd look up at the clock and it would be 11-11. As soon as she told me that story, I got the 11-11 anointing. It's like everywhere I went, I was seeing 11-11. Mom would call me and I'd flip open the phone and look, it'd be right at 11-11 when she'd call me. I'd be at home not even thinking about anything and all of a sudden the thought about the 11-11 would come into my mind. I'd think, what's up with that? And then suddenly for no reason, God would just make me look up at the clock. It'd be 11-11. It was like everywhere I went, 11-11s. <laughs> The next day, I went over to mom and dad, mom and dad's, uh, my stepdad, Jack, and his sister had just been there visiting from California, and she told him this story about this church in California called Bethel Church in Redding, California. Now, I'd never heard of it. Neither had dad. Of course, they'd been out of touch with reality, and I'd been in prison. <laughs> I know I'm the last person on the face of the planet to hear who they are, but I'd been in prison. <laughs> and they said that... Uh, this church had some amazing miracles, that they were living in a flow of miracles that happened all the time. And they said we could go online and listen to some of the pastor, Pastor Bill Johnson's sermons. So I remember, hmm, let's check this out, you know. So Dad and I gathered around the computer, and we started playing some of the sermons there. And they started talking about some of the most amazing miracles. I mean, jaw-dropping stuff amazing stuff. And I was thinking to myself, wow, God, is this for real? Is this, is this church for real? Are these things really happening? If they are, you can tell me. And so we were listening to this man preach, and all of a sudden he, he started the sermon after the testimonies, and his sermon was on Isaiah 60, mom's scripture. And I remember calling to mom. I said, mom, this guy's preaching on Isaiah 60, the scripture you got the other day. Come on, listen. So she came out in the electric wheelchair, and the three of us were gathered around the computer, and we were listening. And he was saying, this is what he said about Isaiah 60. He said, this is the most miraculous chapter in the Bible of healing because it is the healing of Jerusalem after it was completely demolished by the Babylonians and left in ruin for 70 years while they are in captivity. But it was miraculously built when they returned. And I'm thinking, that's the same thing I thought when I read it the other day. That's exactly the same thing. So now I'm interested, and I'm listening to this guy, and I start to think, I wonder if these people have anything to do with mom's healing, if their church has anything to do with it. So while we were all listening, I'm silently doing this in my head, and I say, God, if they do, give me a scripture right now. And remember, I got quiet, and I waited. And I heard in my mind Psalm 67 too. So I had my Bible right there, and I didn't tell mom and dad what was going on, but I just opened it up and I read it. And it says this, that your way may be known among the earth, your saving and deliverance power, and your salvation among all nations. So I read it and I thought, well, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it means that, you know, mom's miracle will be so cool that it will be known all around the earth. So I'm thinking that and wondering if that's what it means and I remember I turned towards the computer to see where Bethel was located at. And right as I did, Bill's preaching, and he goes like this. Now turn to Psalm 67. And then he reads verse 2. Of course, I'm freaking out. I'm like, ah! 
You're not going to believe what just happened. Check it out. I was asking if this church has something to do with your healing. And I heard Psalm 67 too. And as soon as I heard it, he started preaching on Psalm 67 too. And I looked at him and I said, oh, I think this church has something to do with the healing. Now, mom and Jack both looked at me like this. <laughs> you know why? Because after you've been sick that long, it's hard to believe. Now, what do we do? You don't have enough faith, so you're not going to get healed. No, that's not what you do. You believe for them. You believe for them. Amen. So anyway, I'm like, yeah, never mind. And so after the sermon ends, I said, hey, mom, you ready to, you know, go take a nap? I'll take you back. I'll put you in the bed. She goes, yeah, she's in the wheelchair. And off we go. You know, I follow her. She rides in there. And then I picked her up and put her in bed. And I looked at her and I thought, all right, let's do this. I said, how about this, mom? I said, I'll sit here and read the Bible to you. And let's just see if you get anything, if any kind of revelation or something comes to you so that you get a confirmation or a revelation that we should go to Bethel. How about that? And she goes, okay. So she snuggles in, and I open the Bible, and I start reading. Well, within like a minute or two, mom does what mom did. She was on a lot of heavy meds. You have to be on a lot of heavy meds when you're that much in pain. Amen? So she goes, and I'm reading, and I'm like, oh, gosh, trying to not, you know, get in my flesh. And I'm reading because I want her to get a confirmation, right? And I'm reading, reading, and then she would be like that, and then she would wake up and kind of babble for a second. And babble some stuff, and then she'd go back to sleep like that. Well, on about the third babble, she gets, she opens her eyes, and she's freaking out. She goes like this. She starts kind of yelling at me. She goes, you changed the book cover. I'm like, what? She goes, you changed the cover of the book. I go, what book? She goes, our book. See, I had written a book in prison called the Captivity Series, the key to your expected, and we're going to put it up on the screen here. And mom actually helped me design the cover of it. And so now she's telling me, she's actually mad, and she's claiming that I've changed the cover of the book. And she said, you've change the handcuffs. Do you see the handcuffs up there? You change the handcuffs. She goes, they're now open. They're not closed. And I go, mom, I have not changed the cover of the book. The, the book cover is fine. It's the same. She goes, no, you've changed it. The handcuffs are open. They're not closed. They're open now. And I said, well, I assure you, mom, calm down. She was very, getting very excited. I'm like, calm down. I did not change the book cover. The handcuffs are still closed. She goes, nope, they're open. And I said, Okay, so be it. I said, but everything's fine. You don't need to get worked up about it. She goes, all right, fine. And she goes back to sleep. And I'm sitting there like this. What was that? <laughs> I thought we were trying to get a confirmation here. Can we snap to this? Huh? Can you be on the same page with me here? And I caught myself getting in my flesh. Right? I'm like, oh, well, I'm trying to get a confirmation. It's just not working. And I'm thinking that mom is just off babbling nonsense. But you see, I didn't understand something very important. People who are very sick that are born again can be on a lot of medication. But even though they might be under the influence of that medication, their spirit man is untouched by it. And they can still see perfectly in the spirit. And I thought mom was babbling, but she was actually seeing in the spirit. It was me that was being the fool. I was getting in my flesh. After she went back to sleep, I was like, well, that's it. And I slammed the Bible. I forget getting the confirmation. Right? And I got up, and I put the Bible away, and I stood over her. I said, well, forget that then. I guess we have just no choice, and we're just going to have to watch some TV. So I'm all in my flesh. I'm all upset because I wanted her to get the word from God. And I'm being so spiritual myself, obviously. And I pick up the remote. And they had TiVo. They recorded programs that they liked to, to watch. So I just pushed the button and we started to watch. Well, I started to watch one of the programs. So about five minutes goes by. And suddenly my phone rings. Now I've got the remote in this hand. And as I turn to answer the phone like this, I pause the TV without looking at it. And I pick up the phone and I talk to my friend. My friend had called me. We talked for a couple minutes. And when we were done, we said goodbye. I hang up the phone. I turn around towards the TV to push play to watch the show, continue to watch it. 
And this is what I saw full screen on the TV. Let's see if we can get the picture, the, the image up on the screen. Can you see what that is? It's a pair of handcuffs. And they're open. That's the picture that was paused on the TV. Do you see it? Of course, it was taken with a cruddy phone and all that, but that was on the screen of the TV. Full screen, these handcuffs floating in air, open. And I am looking at it, and I start screaming. I'm like, Mom, wake up. And she's like, ping. And I'm like, do you see that? Do you see that? And she looks at it, and she goes, well, that's what I was telling you that I was seeing. If you would have just listened. And I start freaking out. I go and get the phone. I'm starting to take pictures of it. This is one of the, the terrible pictures because I had a really old icky phone at the time. When I start to take pictures of it. I'm like freaking out. I'm screaming. I'm calling for Jack to come in. He comes in to look at it. He's like, I told him the story. He's like, that's amazing. And then all of a sudden the picture drops because when you pause something on TiVo, it only stays up there for like, I don't know, five minutes maybe. And then it drops. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. And I get the remote back and I'm rewinding it and I'm trying to get back to the picture. Well, when I rewound it, I found out that it was that, those handcuffs, that picture was from a promo of a television program called Prison Break. My favorite show. And what had happened is, is the lead character had just broken out of prison. And he's standing there, and now the cuffs are off. And he's standing there looking at the camera like, hey, I'm out. And he drops the cuffs. Now, the cuffs fell from right here in his hand to the ground, which takes about just a like a frame and a half of video. And God in his sovereign timing had my friend call me at that exact moment so I would freeze frame that picture full screen of those cuffs as they fell down to the ground open because he was trying to give the confirmation I wanted so bad. He was saying, the cuffs are off, baby. Go to Bethel. That's your confirmation. When I was in prison, the Holy Spirit taught me so much that eventually I started teaching Bible studies. Today, we receive tons of letters from inmates reporting the same thing happening to them. They're being so transformed through the materials we send them that they're becoming worship leaders, starting prayer groups, and leading Bible studies right in their own prisons. With your help, we must raise up even more leaders from within the walls. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of a change. Call now, and when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of her book, Soul Decrees, along with Soaking Symphony CD by Janie Duvall. With your gift of $35 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Did you know the Bible says the Word has the power to heal your soul? In this little book, Soul Decrees, I've put together some powerful prayers that when you speak them over your life, they will establish healing to your wounded soul, your physical body, and your finances. This is the perfect tool to use every day to get your miracle. Call toll-free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of Soul Decrees and Soaking Symphony. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. So I'm like, okay, God, what do I do next? I say, okay, and no, no, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, all right, I'm supposed to go to Bethel, uh, or is it we're supposed to go? Is it, you know, is mom supposed to go? Is Jack supposed to go? Am I supposed to go? Who's supposed to go? You know, what's the deal? I go, what do I do? And I hear in my mind, do Isaiah 58, which is the fasting chapter. And I said, yes, okay. Isaiah 58, he says, do a seven-day water fast. So I said, okay, seven-day water fast it is. Amen. So the next day, myself and Jack, we both decided to fast together. So we start our seven-day water fast. And I sit down before the Lord to spend time with him. I said, okay, what's the first thing you want me to do? He says, read Isaiah 58. I said, I already know what's in Isaiah 58. I don't need to read it. He goes, read it again. I'm like, okay. 
I read through this chapter that I've read a million times. I get to verse 11, and I didn't even realize this was in there. It says this, and the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and dry places and make strong your bones. It was the third bone scripture. And now I'm like, yes, we're off and running. And they're at the gate. Right? I was like, okay, God, you're leading us through this. Amen? And so the, the next day we're, we're, we're fasting again. I go before the Lord, and I'm like, okay, okay, now what, 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 what should I do? I said, I want to have some clarity. I want to know, should I go to Bethel Church? And I hear in my mind, I said, should I take a trip to Bethel? I hear in my mind, Matthew 10, 10. I open it up, and I go to it, and it says this, on your journey... Don't you love how God can lead you step by step by step by step by step? Isn't that cool, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, on my journey, oh, I'm supposed to go. And I go, I wonder what kind of journey they were talking about here. So I go to read the whole chapter, and it starts out with says, Jesus called his disciples together to go on a journey, and he gave them an anointing to drive out demons and heal the sick. And right there, the Lord spoke to me, said, take a journey, go to Bethel, I'm giving you the anointing to drive out demons and heal the sick. Go there and get it. Go there and get it. So I'm like, okay, all right, all right, this is good. This is awesome. So then my next question is, okay, are Jack and mom supposed to go? Because for mom to go would be a miracle. I mean, just for her to get up out of bed was a miracle. To go to, to get, you know, lift her in her, her chair, take her to the bathroom and lift her onto the toilet. Excruciating agony. Can you imagine her having to, dr- to go there to drive or to fly? Impossible. So I'm like, oh, are they supposed to go? Do they have to be there? What's the deal? And so I got real quiet, and I waited, and I waited for God, and he didn't say a word. And I'm like, okay, what is it? And so then I remember I got in the car, and I drove over to their house, and I walked in because, remember, Jack's fasting too. And so I walk in, and as soon as I walk in, he's sitting in the chair with the Bible, and he kind of spins his head around really fast and goes, what'd you get? <laughs> And I told him all about me asking, should I go on a journey? And how I got Matthew 10, 10, which said, on your journey. So I knew I was supposed to go. I said, but when I asked about you and I asked about mom, I, I didn't get anything. I said, what did you get? And he said, well, I got the story in Genesis 24 about Abraham sending out his servant Eleazar to another country to bring back a wife for his son. And I'm like, okay. Uh, what do you think it means? And he sat there for a minute, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just went, you could see it on his face, it just went zoop. And he goes, I think I'm Abraham, you're Eleazar, and I'm sending you on a trip to go get an anointing that'll bring back my wife. (laughs) And I'm like, yes, I received that. Notice a pattern in this story. God is leading me with his voice to the place I needed to go to receive the anointing I needed to solve the problem. One of the most foundational skills you will need to solve any problem in your life is to be able to hear from God. I'm gonna give you one simple tip to help you with that right now. I do this every day and I've seen some huge miracles come from this very, very simple practice. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. When I have a question that needs an answer, I pray in tongues for a little while to stir myself up and to also remove any noise that might be in my mind blocking God's voice. Then I ask God a question, a specific question, like like when I asked him, should I take the trip to Bethel? Then I get quiet, I get still, and I wait. I wait for God to put a scripture address in my mind. I don't try to think of a scripture that would pertain to my problem. I get still and wait for God to put a scripture in my mind. When I do this simple practice, he always answers. He will do the same for you. He'll give you a scripture that will address your specific question. And that scripture will contain direction that will lead you to your breakthrough. That's what God did when I asked him if I should take a trip to Bethel. I heard Matthew 10, 10 in my mind, which talks about the disciples going on a journey. Right there, as soon as I read it, I knew I needed to go. Practice this simple practice every day. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. You'll be amazed at how 
easy it is to hear from the Father. Let me pray for you now. Lord, we want to hear from you because we know that you have the answers to every single problem we're facing. We believe you want to give us those answers, so we're going to be still and know that you are God. Lord, I ask that when we get quiet, that you would specifically give us a word from your scriptures that would guide us into our breakthrough. I believe that you will give us exact scriptural addresses that we will hear you clearly and will have no hindrances. Then when we step out in faith to execute what you're showing us to do, we will have our breakthrough. And I pray this now for everyone in Jesus' name, amen. When I was in prison, the Holy Spirit taught me so much that eventually I started teaching Bible studies. Today, we receive tons of letters from inmates reporting the same thing happening to them. They're being so transformed through the materials we send them that they're becoming worship leaders, starting prayer groups, and leading Bible studies right in their own prisons. With your help, we must raise up even more leaders from within the walls. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of a change. Call now, and when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of her book, Soul Decrees, along with Soaking Symphony CD by Janie Duvall. With your gift of $35 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Did you know the Bible says the Word has the power to heal your soul? In this little book, Soul Decrees, I've put together some powerful prayers that when you speak them over your life, they will establish healing to your wounded soul, your physical body, and your finances. This is the perfect tool to use every day to get your miracle. Call toll-free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of Soul Decrees and Soaking Symphony. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. Next week, I'm going to share with you the conclusion of this awesome story. Plus, at the end of the program, I'm going to impart to you the same anointing I received when I went to Bethel. You're not going to want to miss this program because I know you want the impartation. We'll see you next week. Have you received a miracle while watching this show? Send us your one minute selfie video. What's a selfie? Take out your cell phone, hold it like this, not like this, so we can air it on television. Hit record and tell us your one minute healing testimony. For more information, go to our website at katiesouza.com.